which government is pleased to announce that as of 14 February 2023, approximately 85% of bonds were tendered in the exchange as determined by the Central Securities Depository. On behalf of His Excellency the President of the Republic, Nana Dodanko Akufuado, I wish to express our profound appreciation to the people of Ghana for their patience and support throughout these very challenging times. I also wish to extend our gratitude to the overwhelming number of bondholders who chose to participate in this all-important effort to pull the economy back from crisis. Mr. Speaker, the current debt restructuring program is occasioned largely by a series of external shocks that hit the country since 2020, as well as some domestic factors. I recall, as will many of us here, the deep anxiety, uncertainty, and confusion during the early days of the COVID-19 program. The constant revision of data and scenarios around this once-in-a-lifetime pandemic, which had exposed major weaknesses in critical systems in education and the economy around the world. These weaknesses were further exacerbated by heavy disruption in global supply chains. Mr. Speaker, amid the swirling chaos and darkened economic outlook, His Excellency President Leonardo Danka Kufuado put together a comprehensive plan which was effectively executed, leading to relatively lower death rates of some 1,400 compared to 53,000 in Africa and over 7 million globally, lower case counts, and the economy eking out a positive growth of 0.5% in 2020 compared to the many economies that went into recessions. However, this program came at huge fiscal costs. Government undertook major fiscal measures beyond what was programmed in the budget to accommodate the increased expenditure and the shortfalls in the revenue. Therefore, government with approval of parliament mobilized funds to address the following three key interventions, finance direct COVID-19 intervention expenditures to protect lives and livelihoods, support the funding gap in the budget occasioned by the COVID-19 pandemic and its negative effects on revenue mobilization, and thirdly, address key structural weaknesses exposed by the pandemic. Government received significant assistance to mitigate the pandemic and its impact on the economy, which helped to reduce the fiscal burden. However, the drastic reduction in revenues, coupled with the high expenditure to contain the speed of the pandemic and to protect lives as well as livelihoods, resulted in a wider deficit of 14.7% of GDP in 2020 and 11.4% in 2021 that needed to be financed. Mr. Speaker, through these and other decisive measures, government has managed and continues to pay compensation for all public sector workers every month, keep the lights on, improve key infrastructure, and maintain security despite heightened and increasing risks. This is in far contrast to the rolling electricity blackouts, long queues of fuel stations, empty shells and shell shops, and increased insurgent activities as reported elsewhere in Africa and even in the West. Mr. Speaker, following these interventions, financing of government and liquidity on our domestic market has severely reduced. The access to the international capital market is closed to Ghana whilst activity on our domestic bond market has slowed down significantly. Mr. Speaker, at this juncture, let me touch on the current ongoing debt restructuring exercise. Stemming from the considerable deterioration in the domestic and external sectors, government undertook an internal debt sustainability analysis which defined public debt to include public, publicly guaranteed debt of the central government, partial non-guaranteed debt of state-owned enterprises and expenditure areas. This analysis revealed that public debt exceeded 100% of our GDP and debt servicing accounted for more than half of total government revenues and almost 70% of tax revenues. Arising from this considerable deterioration in the domestic and external sectors, 
government undertook its routine debt sustainable analysis in 2022, which revealed the public debt at general government level, including SOEs, ESLA, and DACHI, is in present value terms was 103% of our GDP compared to the debt sustainability limit of 55% for countries with medium debt carrying capacity like Ghana. In addition, a standard debt service considered 29% of revenues compared to the 18% debt sustainability threshold. Mr. Speaker, provisional 2022 fiscal data also show that debt service comprising domestic interest payments, external interest payments, external debt amortization, and payment of domestic maturities not rolled over all amounted to 81.6 billion, constituting 85.1% of all revenues in 2022. This implies that a significant proportion of our revenues were used to service debt in 2022. Mr. Speaker, the picture becomes more dire when we include compensations of employees and transfers to statutory funds. Thus, debt service compensation of employees and transfers to statutory funds amounted to 144.3 billion Ghana cities, representing 150.4% of our revenues. Mr. Speaker, at this level, Ghana was assessed to be at a high risk of debt restraints and its debt classified as unsustainable. Let me clarify that the current state of our debt has a lot to do with the lingering effects of the COVID-19 pandemic, the Russian-Ukraine war. This has been exacerbated by the high macroeconomic instability experienced in 2022, occasioned by downgrades by rating agencies, as well as the consequential pressures on government finances due to the actions of non-resident investors and the delayed passage of our revenue bills. Mr. Speaker, this situation is further compounded by the comparatively low levels of domestic revenue collected by government. In 2022, tax-to-GDP ratio was just about 12.6%, woefully below the Sub-Sahara Africa average of 18%, and insufficient to meet pressures on the public purse. Mr. Speaker, following these developments, His Excellency the President, during his address to the nation on the economy on 31st October 2022, had to declare that the economy was in crisis. Government therefore outlined key strategies in the 2023 budget presented to this House on Thursday, 24th November 2022, to address the economic challenges. This was in line with the government's proactive application on 1st July 2022 for an IMF-supported program to restore macroeconomic stability, ensure debt sustainability, as well as social protection underpinned by key structural reforms. At the inspection of, inception of negotiations with IMF, it was agreed that Ghana will have to address its economic challenges on three fronts. The impossible triangle. To embark, one, on fiscal consolidation, two, to undertake debt operations, and three, to secure finance and assurances from development partners. On 12 December 2022, following three rounds of negotiations, interspersed of several virtual meetings, a staff-level agreement was reached on the reforms to be supported under a new three-year standard credit facility of approximately three billion U.S. dollars. The staff level agreement required, among others, the completion of a comprehensive debt restructuring covering domestic and external debt in addition to fiscal consolidation efforts and other structural reforms. This is one of the fastest agreements for a country undertaking a debt restructuring exercise in achieving the SLA in December 2022. Mr. Speaker, the Ministry of Finance formally launched the Domestic Debt Exchange Program on 5th December 2022, seeking to restructure about 137 billion worth of government bonds and notes 
As of December 2022, the total outstanding that eligible and non-eligible holders amounted to approximately 137 billion. Subsequent extensions of dates and payments of maturities mean that the remaining stock reduced from 137 billion to 230 billion of eligible and non-eligible holders. However, the eligible bonds as per the SGM memorandum meant an exclusion of pension funds and bonds that were subject to swap mechanisms for monetary and exchange rate policy operations. This then brought the eligible bonds for tendering to 97 billion 749 million 624,691 Ghana CDs. Mr. Speaker, out of the total 97 billion 749 million 624,691 CDs eligible bonds for tendering, 82 billion 994 million 510,000 and 128 Ghana CDs was successfully tendered. This accounted for about 85% of our standard eligible amounts meeting the target of 80% as expressed in the memorandum of exchange. Mr. Speaker, I mean, I'm mindful that the 82.9 billion bonds that were successfully tendered represent 64% of the outstanding debt stock of 130 billion at the end of December 2022. Mr. Speaker, in addition, though the standard debt restructuring parameters are yet to be determined, government on 19 December 2022 also announced a suspension of all debt service payments for certain categories of external debt pending an orderly restructuring. Mr. Speaker, as I've indicated, the earlier debt exchange program was to alleviate the debt burden while minimizing the impact on investors and the financial sector. Participation in the program has always been, Mr. Speaker, voluntary. The details of the domestic debt exchange are outlined in the exchange memorandum and the subsequent amendments have been publicly available. The coverage of the exchange includes all locally issued bonds and notes of government, as well as ESLA PLC and Dachi PLC bonds. Based on the results of the audit of the public debt, government excluded treasury bills and pension funds from the exchange. Mr. Speaker, since the first announcement of the DDEP program on 5th December 2022, the government has continued to engage with multiple stakeholders on the program. It has been an intense exercise of balancing compassion with the unavoidable and difficult path to restoring our debt sustainability. As a result, Mr. Speaker, a number of amendments to the terms of the offer have taken place with the final extension deadline of 7 February 2023 and administrative extension of 14 February 2023. The various extensions were to allow government to incorporate the feedback and insights it received from the various stakeholders, including the Council of State, the Pension Funds, Organized Labor, the Ghana Association of Bankers, NPRA, the Securities Industry Commission, Exchange Commission, National Insurance Commission, and the individual bondholders and retirees. The final terms of the DDP was designed to address the specific concerns of the different categories of holders, including Category A, Collective Investment Schemes and Natural Persons below the age of 59, Category B, Natural Persons 59 years old or older, and General Category holders representing all other holders except category A and B. The details of the results of participation rates are as follows. Category A holders issued 4,109 instructions and tendered an amount of 5.9 billion Ghana CDs. This represents 6.06% of the eligible bonds. Category B holders issued 1,340 instructions and tendered an amount of 423 million 
in 12,028 Ghana cities. This represents 0.43% of the eligible bonds. And general category holders issued 4.489 instructions and tendered an amount of 76 billion 645 million 190,544 Ghana cities. This represents 78. 0.41% of the eligible bonds. Mr. Speaker, government is mindful of the exchange's ramifications on the country's financial health. As a result, the government is developing several prudential measures to mitigate the potential impact on domestic creditors, considering the need to preserve financial stability. Billions of taxpayers' monies were used between 2017 and 2019 to rescue the financial sector. We have no intention, Mr. Speaker, to imperil that work, and we are determined to protect banks operating in Ghana and strengthen their capacity to finance the economic recovery and growth we see before us. The respective regulators have assessed the potential impact of the exchange on the financial sector. Working together, Bank of Ghana, the Security and Exchange Commission, the National Insurance Commission and the National Pensions Regulatory Authority are recalibrating their regulatory tools to accommodate the necessary forbearances for their respective sectors. In addition, Mr. Speaker, a financial stability fund is being established by government with the help of development partners to provide liquidity and solvency support to banks, pension funds, insurance companies, fund managers, and collective investment schemes to ensure that they are able to meet their obligations to their clients as they fall due. Yeah, mm -hmm. Mr. Speaker, government remains committed to the well-being and dignity of our senior citizens and pension pensioners. Indeed, it has personally, Mr. Speaker, caused me great distress as a number of our pensioners have picketed at the premises of the Ministry of Finance since Monday, February 6, 2023. I have already indicated in my press release, uh, Mr. Speaker, dated 14 February 2023, the government will honor their coupons, payments, and maturing principles, like all government bonds in line with government's fiscal commitments. Mr. Speaker, in seeking to understand the concerns of our senior citizens, I have met to them on three occasions. The most recent was yesterday, 15 February 2022, where I explained the terms of the new bonds. Mr. Speaker, I subsequently wrote to their convener, letting him know, Mr. Speaker, that all pensioners who did not participate in the bond offering are uh, exempted. Mr. Speaker, I pray that puts paid to the need for our senior citizens to pick it at the ministry. Mr. Speaker, I would like to thank all those who helped in those discussions um, for this. Mr. Speaker, this significant milestone of the success of the domestic debt exchange program would also build momentum for a sterner restructuring program which has also commenced. As part of this progress, Ghana has officially asked bilateral creditors for a debt treatment initiative under the G20 Common Framework. Consequently, Mr. Speaker, Ghana co-hosted a meeting with the Paris Club, including both Paris Club and non-Paris Club creditors on 10th January 2023. We reiterated the requests for expedited treatment under the Common Framework and presented our economic and fiscal outlook as well as the steps undertaken so far with the DDEP. Most importantly, Mr. Speaker, we made it known that we expect 
the creditor committee to be formed in an expeditious way to facilitate the program to ensure that we are able to go to the fund board in March. We have started the process of negotiating in good faith with our commercial creditors two preliminary discussions and exchange of information have started on a good footing with representative committees and advisors. The members have indicated their commitment to establish a creditor committee to assess Ghana's request for debt treatment under the common framework by end of February 2023. We hope, Mr. Speaker, our commercial creditors will understand our desire to negotiate with our bilateral creditors softer terms than the ones we anticipate to propose to them, as a speedy process with the bilateral creditors is needed to pave the way for the discussion with private creditors. Mr. Speaker, we are also approaching major creditors like India and China to ensure that our discussions with the Paris Club is accelerated. Mr. Speaker, we've also negotiated discussions with the representative of our international bond and the advisors, substantive discussions are due to start with them in the weeks to come. The government recognizes the continued importance of the DDEP in closing the financing gap and enabling the government to meet the debt sustainability target of 55% of debt to GDP in present value terms by 2028. Mr. Speaker, we have already indicated that these debt operations were a composite part of a broader government response strategy for addressing the current challenges while we continue to secure an IMF program to put confidence in the economy we are complementing this by enhancing our domestic mobilization efforts mr speaker as already stated in the house in november we did lose access to the international capital markets at the beginning of 2022. At the same time, budget implementation was confronted with domestic financing challenges from the auctions, as well as lower than estimated domestic revenue mobilization. This presented a very challenging macroeconomic environment during 2022, leading to a widened financing gap of the budget and therefore became necessary for the Bank of Ghana to fund shortfalls at the auction market to avoid this orderly default and prevent a deeper crisis. Mr. Speaker, it was necessary for the government to seek financing from the Bank of Ghana to augment its fiscal operations for the year. The Bank of Ghana last week concluded work on its financial accounts for 2022 and reports that the total overdraft extended to government for 2022 was 37.9 billion. Mr. Speaker, in line of Section 30, Clause 6 of the Bank of Ghana Act 2022, Access 1-2, I'm using this platform to inform the legislature of the financing of the budget by the Bank of Ghana. The domestic debt exchange exercise and the standard debt restructuring program will make such financing unnecessary going forward in 2023 and beyond. Mr. Speaker, all these efforts will be greatly enhanced if the income tax amendment bill, the excise duty and excise tax stamp amendment bills, as well as the growth and sustainability levy bill, which are standing in this August House, could be prioritized and passed. Mr. Speaker, the passage of these bills will enable government to complete four of the five agreed prior actions in the staff level agreement since tariff adjustment by the PURC, publication of the Auditor General's report on COVID-19 spending and onboarding of Get Fund, DACF, and Road Fund on the Givenest have all been successfully completed. Mr. Speaker, I cannot emphasize enough the need to secure the board approval for our IMF program by the end of March 2023. I therefore entreat the House to prioritize approval of the outstanding revenue bills and the various concessional facilities so that we would ensure that the board meets successfully in March in Washington 
and we also have the appropriate resources um, for growth from the facilities which are concessional. Mr. Speaker, let me take this opportunity to thank once again each and every one of you for your collective effort in passing the 2023 statement and the budget, 2023 budget statement and the finance bills that accompanied it. We are still counting on you for the passage of all the outstanding revenue bills which are necessary for effective budget implementation as well as boosting our efforts at increasing our tax to GDP from less than 13 percent to the sub-Saharan average of 18 percent. Mr. Speaker, as international and domestic bond markets are shut for the financing of government programs, we are relying on treasury bills and concessional loans as the primary sources of financing for the 2023 budget. We therefore, Mr. Speaker, call on this House to support the government's financing requests to ensure a smooth recovery from these economic challenges. Mr. Speaker, I want to assure you that I'll come back to this August House with the necessary fiscal adjustments after the debt operation is completed for your, for your consideration and approval. On behalf of His Excellency the President, we wish to thank everyone who has tended and supported the Domestic Debt Exchange Program. It is a truly remarkable act of sacrifice in our nation's history. We thank those who heeded our clarion call and took the selfless patriotic decision to participate. Your names and deeds will never be forgotten. Your timely support is deeply appreciated. God bless you all. We also appreciate, Mr. Speaker, the concerns of those who may still be uncertain in these choices, and I trust that we can continue to engage, work together to meet, to reset the fundamental issues of the economy and reposition our economy. I'm confident that the program government has set out for this year, supported by Parliament, will get us out of the economic crisis that has besieged our economy since COVID-19 reached our shores back in March 2020. I am confident that with the conclusion of the domestic debt exchange program, we'll experience stability in the exchange rates, inflation and interest rate, bringing businesses and families some respite. Mr. Speaker, with the successful completion of the DDEP, we believe that with the sustained support of Ghanaians and this August House, we will recover from this economic crisis sooner rather than later, as indicated by His Excellency President Akufuado. I'm confident that the Lord who has begun this good work will carry it on to completion. We will therefore encourage honorable members to support the government's secure board approval for the IMF program to restore macroeconomic stability, ensure debt sustainability, as well as provide critical social protection for the benefit of Ghanaians. Mr. Speaker, I thank you, the House and fellow Ghanaians, for the attention. God bless Ghana. Thank you, Mr. Speaker.